Hey y'all, welcome back to You Only Get One Chance, right? Um, I know it's been a while, there's been a lot going on. Um, I've moved states, so I now live um, in Colorado with my family so that they can help take care of me. Um, and yeah, I've definitely been struggling. Um, there's no... There's no doubt about that. Um, I got a new diagnosis. So I have something called akinetic catatonia, um, which basically means that the blank stares like that I've been having and like there's nobody home no matter how many times you like move your hands in front of my face, like I'm barely blinking, if I'm blinking at all, um, and I'm just like checked out. That's what we originally thought that was, was absence seizures. So we originally thought that my brain was literally just like going, mm, no, can't do it, and shutting off. So with akinetic catatonia, it's the same thing. I completely go away. Um, nobody can necessarily get me out of it. Um, I just blank stare. I don't move. I don't talk. Um, not until I'm starting to like kind of come out of it. So the psychiatrist I have who I believe is probably the best psychiatrist that I've had so far, um, is really keen, like really strongly believes that she wants to make my quality of life better. Um, and so she's been playing with medications and doing things like that. I was on really sedative meds before um I started seeing her like a lot like most of my meds had a sedative effect to them and so I was sleeping all the time and I wasn't really eating because I didn't have the motivation to do it I rarely got out of bed um those kind of things and so she was really like I really want to focus on getting you to a point where you're functioning throughout the day because a lot of diagnoses that I have aren't going to go away. I have to learn to deal with them. I have to learn to live with them. Um, so right now that means not working. I haven't worked since February of this year, um, which is a struggle for my family and I. I, now because of the medicine she put me on, I do get up out of bed. Um, I still have bad days where I just can't, but it's getting better in a sense of like, I am able to get up and move around and like do the dishes and then I can go lay down or do the laundry and then I can go lay down um like I said it's still rare when I can do those things but I could at least do them sometimes which for me it is a super success um but the next thing that she recommended um for akinetic catatonia and the problems I'm having with my conversion disorder and things like that is called ECT. So a lot of you have probably watched a movie that depicts ECT. Um, I'm really, they're telling me that that's not what it's like at all. So to like ignore that. Um, but what ECT essentially is, is they are putting you under general anesthesia for like five, 10 minutes at most um they are literally sending a pulse into your brain to give you a seizure 
So the seizure lasts, according to them, anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes. Um, typically the average is like 30 seconds to a minute. Um, and so they literally give you a seizure. The idea behind it is kind of that it kickstarts your brain, right? It, your brain at some point, especially due to trauma, which I have, cuts off some neuro pathways that ECT, the idea behind it is to reopen those pathways or to make new pathways. Not going to lie to you guys, little scared. Um, I actually start tomorrow. Um, ECT therapy is done at a hospital because you have to be under general anesthesia. And it usually takes you an hour and a half to two hours to recover afterwards. There are obvious side effects. I don't know that any will present themselves with me. Uh, because like I said, tomorrow is my first treatment. Um, and yeah, I'm a little nervous. Um... It's not something to be scared of, is what I'm told. It works for 50 to 80% of patients, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm a little nervous. So, I will be doing my best to take you guys on this ECT journey with me because I really believe that all the research I've done and, and the talking with the doctors that I've done, that this is something really helpful for people that, that are like me and medication is just not cutting it. Like it's just, it may be taking the edge off, but it's not a fully addressing the issues. It's not fully helping the, the symptoms that you have and the things that you have. Um, they told me that ECT is really good for, um, major depressive disorder. And, um, I couldn't tell you how many people I know that do suffer from depression, um, like I do. And I'm hoping that by doing this journey with you guys, you can see that it's not scary. Um, and I'm really hoping that it helps. I'm really hoping I'm one of their success stories, even if I'm not. Um, it's 50 to 80% of people. So those are pretty good odds. When you talk about medication, its success rate is only 30 to 50%. So my insurance is covering it. Most insurances do cover it. Um, once two doctors agree, that ECT could benefit you. So, I will update you guys again in the morning, right before I go in for my ECT treatment, and hopefully I'll be able to talk to you guys right after, after I come to. However, there are potential side effects, so I may suffer um, from some amnesia, short-term amnesia, which they say does happen. Um, but hopefully, um, I'm going to have my mom help me film most of this, um, my husband as well, and so that you guys can actually see the journey and see what it's like to do ECT because it's not as common, I think, as it should be. So I will see you guys tomorrow and I hope you're having a beautiful day and hopefully this helps somebody that's struggling. See you guys later.